let's take a, the, let's take a look at the intuition behind the arc length, why the formula is what it is. With arc length, we're trying to find the distance traveled if you were to travel along the graph of a function. So here's a generic graph of a function called f of x. And let's say there's some interval from some a to b. We'd like to know how long it would be if we were to travel along the graph of the function. So we chop the interval a to b up into sub-intervals. And we have one here called, the, basically think of it as just any generic sub-interval, but um, this is the case sub-interval. So there's some interval here, the case one. And it has a left endpoint, it has a right endpoint. And what we're going to do is, uh, well, at all these individual points where we partition the, the interval from A to B, we're going to then just find out where these X values are, um, give, what they give you for the Y values, and just connect them and get a polygon path. And we can get the line segments length and add these lengths up. This one here, the kth one, has uh, this point here has as its uh, x coordinate xk minus 1. The y coordinate is f of that. Okay. The other point that's up here has xk as the x component and f of that as the y component. Well, we know how to find the distance between two points. That'll be how long this line segment is. This represents the change in x, and this represents the change in y. This here represents the change in y. All right, so we have change in x and change in y. OK, great. And so change in x, and this guy is change in, uh, change in y. All right, so let's get the distance formula. We get subtract the x's in square plus subtract the y's in square. We're going to focus our attention on the second part of this. Go back to a result from first semester calculus. The mean value theorem says the following. It says that someplace in the interval, you can be guaranteed that your derivative will be equal to the slope of that secant line. When you, con when you connect two points, that's called a secant line. And some place in here, in fact, uh, let me just we'll say here, there's some place where the tangent line slope is the same as that secant line slope. Here's an example of that. And so that's all this basically says. That's a symbol for there exist. There's some place here, xk star, xk star, where the secant line slope is the tangent line slope. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator and get the numerator here is equal to the derivative times this difference in x. Now notice this is exactly the quantity that is squared up underneath our square root here. So we are going to replace that left hand side with the right hand side. The derivative of xk star times this difference in x's. And then we're going to recognize that that same difference in x values shows up in both terms here. And they're both squared. We're going to factor it out. So let's factor it out. Uh, let's have basically uh, the xk minus xk minus 1 quantity squared and we're left with 1 plus the derivative squared. And don't forget that we're underneath the square root. And so this perfect square that's here can come out. And remember this is the change in x. Okay, We're going to call that delta x. And it's going to come out of the integral. And then this part, 1 plus the derivative squared, stays inside the integral. Okay. 
All right, so underneath here we have the result of that. Delta X on the outside, the one plus the derivative squared on the inside, and the difference in the X's we're calling delta X. Okay, great. Well, we're almost where we need to be. This is the length of this segment in this particular interval. If we want the arc length, we can take and add up a bunch of these. In this particular example, one, two, three, four. We have six of them. Uh, n is equal to six in this in example. But um, in order to get accuracy, we're going to have to take our sub, take our interval, and break it into more sub intervals. Let the let n go to infinity. As the number of sub intervals goes to infinity, then the line segment addition will be closer and closer to the actual arc length. So we take, as, as n goes to infinity, the delta x, the change in x, will go to zero. If you ever seen these two together, you know that means a Riemann sum. The sum of links here would be the exact arc length. Here, we add an approximation, and now we have exactness. And that's how we end up with our formula for arc length. Then we take the derivative and square, we add one, then we take the square root, and then we integrate.